I'm Steve for This Week With Cars, and it's been six months since I've worked on my MGA. Last time you saw this car, I took out the very, very rusted fuel tank. This has been here for a while now, but this is from Classic Gold, which I believe is Moss Motors' own brand of reproduction parts. And here's what it looks like. We've got a fuel filler on the top. This port over here is for the pipe that runs to the fuel pump. And right here we have a hole for a new fuel sender. And I did order a new fuel sender as well as new straps to hold the tank up. First we'll need to put the fuel sender in. Okay, well, looks like it did not come with new screws to hold the sender in. So I'm going to have to find the old tank and get the screws out of it. It also says that the screws go through the tank and into the area where the fuel is. This is also very common on MG T-Series cars and you'll see fuel usually seeping out a little bit around the sender. And it suggests that to solve that, to put a little bit of Hylomar on the screw holes when you install the screws. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll be right back and hopefully I can find the original tank still. Well, here it is. We'll see if I can get the old sender out. If you didn't know, Craftsman screwdrivers are made to have a wrench fit over them. Looks like I'm just going to twist the screwdriver. It's hard to tell because there's so much dirt on there. It looks like these bolts, looks like these are bolts with a hex head on them. Maybe I have a wrench that can fit that. It's turning. Let's make sure these are the same thread as the new tank. Looks like they are. So I'm going to try to get the rest of these out. I was only able to get the two outer ones off at the socket. I'm going to have to use an open end wrench to get the other four out. Shall we take a quick look at how this old one looked? Well, that looks a lot better than I expected. It is frozen up, but this is not rusted. You can see the fuel level was about right there. That's uh, how much it was floating in the tank. Then it became locked into that position. It smells pretty bad, so I'm gonna plug this back up. Now I can install the sender. You can see the sender moves like this. And I want the wiring to be on the bottom of the tank. I also have some Hylomar blue, so I'm going to put that on to seal these holes. Now I'm going to use this to tighten them up so I know that they're all at the same tightness. I'll just go around one more time. Okay, looks good. Let's see if we can get it in the car. Before I can put the tank up, I need to deal with these straps. This one is pretty bent and rusted. These are held up here by a bolt right there and one bolt right there. It's a little hard to see. So if we take a look at the new strap, you can see the hole right there. Then over here, that bolt goes through the side right there. This old strap is pretty rusty. I might end up breaking the bolts trying to get that out. I have my hoodie pulled over my head to keep all the rust from falling down the back of my shirt. I 
have the new strap installed. A lot easier to see things now. One bolt right there. And I have a new bolt that goes through the sleeve right there. And then these two get bolted together to clamp the tank in. Originally, there was a piece of rubber that would be on your tank clamp. So you either need to order one of those or make something out of say a bicycle inner tube or some other kind of rubber to work as a buffer so that these straps don't end up rusting through your tank. Okay, there we go. Nice and solid. I have the tank hooked up again. The outlet to the pump must not be exactly the same because I had to bend the pipe a little bit to get it to reach back to the fitting. Other than that, it was a pretty easy install. Time to put some fuel in, see if it holds. It's looking good so far. No dripping, no leaks from the fuel tank. I might finally be able to remove this fuel bottle now. Before hooking this up, I'm going to run the fuel pump and see if fuel comes from the fuel tank up here. If the pump and tank are working, we should see fuel come out right here. something that I, there's not any fuel coming out yet. Maybe build up some pressure. I may need to check the connections on the pump. Everything is connected down here. Maybe the pump needs primed. I'm going to take this line from my fuel drip bottle and I'm going to put gasoline down this hose back to the fuel pump. Now I'm gonna turn the pump on, see if it pumps out from here. fuel pump is able to pump the fuel that I just put in there back out. Now I'm going to take this vacuum, see if I can suck the fuel from the tank through the pump up to here. All right, it looks like the fuel's coming up. Let's try the pump again. There we go. Now we know we have fuel coming up here. I'll connect this up to the carburetors. If I hadn't done that test, it might have been a lot of troubleshooting to figure out what was wrong with the car. Fuel bottle is removed. Now it's time to see if the car will run for the first time since I've owned it off of the fuel in its own fuel tank. <laughs> Looks like it runs, and I think we're back on track now for getting the rest of this car done. That's it for today. If you want to see more work on my 1962 MGA, Comment below and click subscribe.